For the second year running, he wouldn't be buying any lottery tickets. Well, let's see if he got lucky today. Our man there is Jer Canning. Kerry begin the defence of their monster title with Owen Brosnan at centre-half back, his first championship match for nearly three years. Brian Sheehan is in midfield alongside Seamus Scanlon and captain Colm Cooper begins his tenth championship season. Kerry man John Evans in charge of Tipperary gives championship debuts to right half back Cahill Dillon of Aharlow and number six Lorcan Egan of JK Brackens. Skipper Barry Grogan has recovered from injury and is selected at top of the left. Matthew O'Donnell gets a lot of length into it because it's a tricky breeze blowing down the field. And away here comes Cahill Dillon. Opportunity to set up a scoring chance which might work out for Sweeney. And there's the opening point of the match. Connor Sweeney making the diagonal run across here to take that pass which was perfectly delivered to him. Here's Kieran O'Leary, big day for him. Nicely into Cooper, wrist transferred beautifully. And the little chip there by Declan O'Sullivan flies over the bar. Beautifully constructed, Kieran O'Leary across it to Cooper, lovely quick transfer. And the man from Drummond Pierces knocks it over the bar, levels the match. Carrying it up here is Hugh Coughlin. Hugh Agarda based in Port Leisha, transferred in the last 12 months from St. Vincent's in Dublin to Port Leisha. Brian Fox. Brian Fox putting the boot through it and putting it over the bar. Good score by Brian Fox. This 23-year-old, a nephew of the Tipperary hurler of yesteryear, Pat Fox. Down towards Colum Cooper once again. The Gooch thought about transferring it rapidly to O'Leary and now holds on and holds on in the end. The referee deciding the guilty party is George Hannigan of Tipperary. Free quickly taken back into Cooper. Declan O'Sullivan now having to adjust his positioning here just as the challenge arrived in there. And Cooper recycles this one back as far as Kieran O'Leary. Now Brian Sheehan. Here's Seamus Scanlon who's coming in place of Anthony Maher who's got the flu and the final kick has flown over the bar there. Beautiful strike on it. Well, there's a bit of work to do here after that challenge came in there very strongly on Declan O'Sullivan. Aidan O'Mahony striking it from 45 metres out and putting it over the bar and making it two points apiece. Comes back towards Declan O'Sullivan. Does well, nice turn. Referee says play on. Back from Brian Sheehan. O'Sullivan striking and hits it off the goalkeeper. Gets a second chance, however, and the keeper comes again and blocks it. Two goal-scoring opportunities for Declan O'Sullivan. There was his first goal-scoring chance. Well stopped by Matthew O'Donnell, and Matthew O'Donnell does the business again there. A bit lacklustre so far from the defending monster champions. Donica Walsh kicking it in long, well held by Kieran O'Leary into Gooch Cooper. And Colin Cooper gets his first point of the match. And Kerry lead by three points to two. It was dished forward to him here by O'Leary, but completed by Cooper. George Hannigan kicking across the ball. Grogan going out, but the angles getting more difficult for him. Mark O'Shea out there as well, trying to force him out onto the edges. Hit under pressure, but hit well. Good score. Kerry disputed, but Barry Grogan takes the credit. And it's three points apiece, and the teams are level for the third time. Philip Austin. Now they need to make some kind of incision here. Past Killian Young. Goes down. That's good play by Philip Austin. Drawing the foul. And the referee with the notebook out now to have a little word. Could be the first yellow card of the match shown for this foul here. Killian Young, the one being spoken to. Tip goes short of the free because the angle was tricky enough, but it's into Philip Austin. Nice dummy to set it up here. And Austin plays it beautifully over. First point of the afternoon for Philip Austin. He goes down injured immediately afterwards. There was a late challenge on him. Philip Austin striking. And in came Domica Walsh. And uh, 
it may be his birthday tomorrow but it's going to be a, a yellow card day today different type of card jack o'connor looking for a really good start to the championship season here against tipperary Kerry once again trying to build an attack from their own half back line with owen brosnan in the thick of it closed down and fouled takes the free quickly on as far as kieran o'leary diagonally across towards kieran don he tried to touch it down as far as colin cooper every one of the full forwards involved in that and cooper gets his second point terrific carry score here's owen brosnan likes to attack brian sheehan there as well brosnan here as well and brosnan kicks it over the bar on his return to the championship linking up with brian sheehan taking a clever return finishing smartly and Kerry leads 6-4 Donahue comes out ahead of Paddy Conn, turns brilliantly, now he's got a goal-scoring chance himself, and it hits off the frame of the goal, and it goes wide, and he gets nothing for his troubles. The big tall man himself, Kieran Donahue, taking it from the air, clutching it, nursing it, and striking it off the frame of the goal and outside. Owen Brosnan going long. Missed by Kieran O'Leary, but the... Star got it and O'Leary gets the return pass and duly plants it over the bar. His first point in the championship and it comes in the 32nd minute. George Hannigan. Tip of got a good 15 minutes without scoring. Needing a score and George Hannigan puts it over the bar. Good work by the midfielder. There's a Tipperary player down over there, that's Hugh Coughlin. And uh, it's a question now of whether the linesman saw what went on over there. A little bit of needle creeping into this match. And the referee still in consultation while this is going on here between Mark O'Shea and Barry Grogan. It's uh, Tomas O'Shea who's been spoken to. And uh, he gets a red! Tomas O'Shea is sent off and he is broken hearted. Donica Walsh works hard. Cleverly in towards Donaghy. One hand trying to take it down. Surrounded. Dragged down. Penalty. Paddy caught his marker in trouble immediately and then a combination of Colin McDonald down went the star and the end result penalty kick for Kerry rolled in with great confidence and deadly accuracy and that is the perfect penalty Darren O'Sullivan keeps it in play Kerry so much more inventive, so much pace here as well. And Darren O'Sullivan ready to take off. Cheered on by the crowd. Takes a return ball here. Great play. Great score. Would have deserved a goal. He struck it sweetly and it just rose up and over the crossbar. Tip now hoping to try and make their extra man count. Hasn't counted for anything so far. Egan nicely on. Mulvihill's in. Mulvihill kicking it over the bar. Brian Mulvihill with his first point since coming on as a second half substitute. And the gap is reduced to six points. Back towards Peter Atchison, the substitute. Looking up. Atchison firing it in towards Grogan. And it's in the back of the net. Brian Grogan goes in. But, but the referee has blown his whistle and he's going in towards his umpires there and I think he's disallowing it he's disallowing it for a square ball when Peter Atchison kicked it in you can see him there outside it clearly now balls in the air and the referee was a tight call wasn't it but the goal doesn't count square ball again the need transferred to Philip Austin Austin holding waiting kicking and that's well put over the bar by Philip Austin. He's got a second point now, and it's uh, 114 to 11 points.
Here comes Philip Austin again. Oh, he struck the butt of the upright this time. And for the second time in a matter of minutes, Tipperary have been out of luck where goal scoring was concerned. Scanlon fisting it out as far as Brian Sheehan. Cooper wanted it. Sheehan kicks it in. Keeper comes. Declan O'Sullivan is there as well. Flicked back in. And Declan O'Sullivan boots it over the bar. Good score. Colin Cooper. Lazily struck forward towards Declan O'Sullivan. Gave it back here to Brian Sheehan. He got 2-5 last year. And he's got 2-1 in this match. 2016 points to 11 points. Beautifully finished with consummate ease by Brian Sheehan. Wonderful finish. Wonderful football. And that's that. The only grievance I would have, I suppose, in the whole game was that the, the, the penalty call. The penalty changed the game. It just put a big gap and it gave Kerry the confidence and it gave our lads suddenly, instead of being a man up and playing with the wind, we, got defl we were deflated and we couldn't get our hands on the ball and Kerry were moving and, uh, you know, this thing, Kerry got their tails up, Ger, and, you know, I, I think uh, the lads knew it was going to be difficult from there on. I must ask you about your brother, Tomas, because we didn't see what happened, but there was some incident there somewhere. Yeah, the, the, the two of them seemed to be a bit of argy-bargy between the two of them. I did, personally, I didn't think there was much in it, but sure, I'm, I'm his brother, I'm probably going to say that anyway. Yeah. All right, it's a fair, fair enough comment from Mark. Tony, you think the Kerry team isn't complete yet? Well, certainly they're not complete. I suppose, you, as we've spoken often enough, they have a fantastic forward line. But we saw in midfield today they were in trouble in midfield. No, you can talk about Tipperary, but that's a good team. Tipperary are a good team. Kerry's defence as well hasn't really been tested yet. So, you know, f they're very, very good in the forwards from 10 up to 15. But midfield in particular and their backs isn't complete yet. I'll tell you what they are about, Tony. They're unbelievably precise. They're passing. They're kicking of the ball. Yeah. Their movement, their composure. I mean, I guarantee you, if they had won wide today, that was the height of it. I mean, their movement, their vision, the ball always goes... You know when you're watching football and you say, oh, you should give it to that guy? He gives they, it to They do it. Yeah. You know, and also they're able to... I mean, whenever they went a man down, they immediately killed the game. They brought people back in numbers. They, they just went into go-slow mode, mode, mode. They held the ball. They took all the win. I mean, John was entirely wrong about his analysis of the game with the greatest respect. Kerry completely strolled that game and bossed it from start to finish, even though Tipperary dominated midfield in the first half. Tell us about Kieran Donahue, because you were saying the way he was used was very interesting. Well, the point that Tony makes is right. Their big problem is at midfield. You know, uh, uh, without Darrell Shea, they looked very mediocre in midfield. I mean, and of course, with Donahue at full forward, they can conjure scores, and they've got that axis of Donahue, Cooper, yeah. you know, Donahue, whoever else is coming through. And, you know, as Art McCurry famously said about Frank McWigan, once it's not possible to give him a bad ball, you can't give Donaghy a bad <laughs> ball. I mean, some of the stuff that was kicked into him today, I mean, that was a 70-yard kick. He took it over his head. He should have stuck it in the net. He was a wee bit unfortunate. But all the time when he was at full forward, he was creating. He's got great hands, and I think because of the basketball, mm. you know, that he can give a pass in a crowded sort of basketball lane a foot mm. away or two feet away. He sees all of that, and he creates and creates and creates. He's very unselfish. The difficulty is, of course, when they were struggling at midfield, they brought him out to midfield. And the first, first two kickouts, then, he caught one with two hands, and he caught <laughs> the next one with one hand. Yeah. And he... He, he, he killed Tipperary off, really, in a sort of a 10-minute spell when he came to midfield. But the problem is there's only one of them. And what do they do against Cork? Because Cork are the best midfield in terms of ball winning there that I've ever seen in Gaelic football. But you and, would have Paul and Galvin uh, fit. No, I understand and we're, that. We're, but, dis we're disrespecting yeah, Limerick but, here but, as well. But, but, but the problem is if you move Donaghy out to midfield, then you don't have his cutting edge in there. And this is where Kerry are going to have the problem because going forward when they're attacking, they're peerless. Yeah. OK, but, well, you spoke about their defensive wall. Tell us about that, the, how they killed off the game against Tip. The, you know, the very, very best teams, you know, the, the sort of the teams that spring to mind, Kerry or Tyrone over yeah. the last decade, they know how to kill a game off. And I mean, regularly, whenever Tipperary went a man up, five Kerry three. had five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten people back in that defensive area. What they were guarding against was a goal. And the other thing was, with all those men back, at one point here, I think uh, Rory has highlighted that there are ten Kerry players and I think there are four Tipperary players at that stage. Now, this is when Tipperary are desperately trying yeah. to get a goal. And what they did was, not only was that killing any possibility of a goal, 
But because there were 10 of them in that area, they then worked the ball out very slowly and methodically. And the other thing about them is they don't give the ball away. It's very difficult to get the ball off them because there are no wayward passes. And the impression of the second half was that Kerry just had the ball all the time. Nice. You know, so they're, you know, they have problems, there's no doubt. But also, you know, they, they, they're, they're, they're cut above everybody else absolutely. apart from Cork. Yeah, they're still as good as what's there. They're a super yeah. forward line. They're natural footballers and they don't waste scores. And Funny you Gooch, weren't saying that earlier. Oh, just yeah. <laughs> with, <laughs> with, <laughs> with Gooch inside in the corner. <laughs> We're going to move on to your favourite subject, Tony. Because when US President Barack Obama visits Money Gold tomorrow, both the Liam McCarthy and Sam McGuire trophies will be there to greet him. Of course, Sam McGuire on loan from Cork, the current proud holders of the All-Ireland football title. And their defence began today against Clare and reporting on this one is Pat McAuliffe. All-Ireland champions Cork ran onto the pitch at Parky Cueve to defend the Sam Maguire Cup for the first time in 20 years. Their opponents, Clare, had finished a disappointing sixth in Division 4 of this year's league, so there was no surprise when the League 1 holders raced into a two-point lead. With a very strong wind at their backs, sharp shooter Daniel Goulding who would end the game with eight points, kicking two scores in the opening six minutes. But plucky Clare fought back, with points from Gary Brennan and the outstanding Rory Donnelly, who were a Clare man, would end with five points as he levelled the game with his first in the eighth minute. The Cork full forward line, however, were combining well. Donegal O'Connor punched a good score, and when Kieran Sheehan kicked the second of his four points, his side dead six points to two. Then came the only goal of the game. Patrick Kelly burst through the clear defence before setting up the Bally Desmond Man O'Connor for the only goal of the game in the 22nd minute. The Lee Siders midfielder Aidan Walsh then got on the score sheet with a long range point before Brennan went close to a goal for the visitors to leave it 1 9 to 4 points at the break. Clare kicked three unanswered points in the opening minutes of the second half through Alan Clohessy, Rory Donnelly and David Tuberty. But just when it appeared they were mounting a comeback, Donegal O'Connor and Pierce O'Neill showed why Cork are champions. Substitute Paul Kerrigan quickly got his name on the score sheet before full-back Michael Shields scored what many felt was the score of the game. David Tuberley got Clare's only point from a free, before Rory Donnelly kicked their tent from play, which was to prove their last of the match, as Cork finished powerfully to add another seven points. Alan O'Connor scored their 17th of the game. Then leash referee Eddie Kensler with a fine game showed the second yellow card to Clare forward Graham Kelly, whose reaction was to strike the Cork substitute John Mescola, which will surely add to his suspension. Mescola's response was to kick a fine point, and Kieran Sheen added his fourth from play to see Cork cruise to a semi-final meeting with Waterford in two weeks' time. It finished Cork one goal and 23 points, Clare 11 points. It was disappointing to lose Graham even on the, the two yellow cards because he had worked so hard in the game and he was one of our key forwards as regards work rate, tackle count and listen I didn't see the incident at the end as regards what happened but I heard the crowd in the background so it didn't sound good but it's, it's disappointing that he had to go that way and that the way it ended on that front. It could be said you're learning from Arsene Wenger. <laughs> Let's say if I was there, I'd be one man that would put my hand up and say, yeah, I saw it and I wouldn't agree with it. But listen, I wasn't near the incident, so it's impossible for me to comment. But listen, be Ella. Pleased to be into the next round. That's the objective. And, uh, you know, if, um, there were periods of the game in the first half we were playing quite well. Maybe didn't take all our chances, but, you know, obviously we conceded a number of scores to Clare, particularly on the early stages of the second half, which left them back into it a bit, we'd have been disappointed with that. Um, we probably kicked on a bit in, you know, with 10 or 15 minutes ago and got the score to count it, but plenty worked out. 123 is a good uh, plus for a side going to the Munster semi-final against Waterford. Yeah, I, I suppose maybe at times today Clare gave us that little bit of space, which, you know, I think on another day we wouldn't get and, uh, you know, we'll have to be sharper from that point of view. All right, uh, Kevin, do you want to clear up that? 
Well, Sending it, off the wasn't um, seen by the Clare management. Yeah, it's it's hard to be conclusive about the, the double yellow. You know, he, he has been he has been sent off uh, just here. I don't know what's happening with John Miskola off camera. This is an, another great thing. Something something was said or done, but then there's a breakdown in discipline completely, and he's headbutted him. That's that's what he's done. Now that's, you know. What happens there? Now, he, he was sent off for two yellows. Oh, that'll be, that, that, that'll be looked at because the, the referee is dealing with an incident other than the incident. head, but a separate okay. incident. So um, that brings up a good point for another night that w we might be able to tease See, out. See, he'd taken out the red card and then given him, give him a red card as well. Well, at that point yeah, in time. There was two different incidents in this particular case. No, but you should it's explain the rules so that people understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, Joe, Joe no, no, I'm, quite, I'm quite serious because yeah, it's a very well, interesting point. If he was sending him off, for instance, for something that he didn't do, you know, say there was a red card incident prior to the headbutt and the referee gave a yellow, that now anymore cannot be upgraded. The, the referees yes. have got a motion through Congress and it's, it's very interesting. My own opinion is the charter for dirty play. Yeah. I can't believe uh, that this, the motion got through, but uh, we'll see a lot more of it. We'll, we'll talk about it as the season goes on. The, the, well, the boss want to take the referees out of it, but then the committee want to take themselves out of it, and now you have the typical compromise where you know a foul play won't be. Everybody won't that, be that'll come up yeah. a lot, a lot that more during the summer. But in this case, there yeah. was a breakdown of personal discipline by Graham Kelly. No other, no, there can be no other description no. of it. He headbutted a guy that doesn't take place in sport or Gaelic games. So oh. whatever is coming for him, I'm afraid he deserves it in in, in this particular. Tony Cork, you made the point to me earlier that in some ways these early matches for Cork and Kerry don't serve a huge purpose. Well, I suppose there's a certain inevitability about the results of some of them. Um, I suppose 123 today against Clare. I thought Clare would be more competitive than that. I, I Clare, any time we used to play a Clare down the years, they made it very, very hard for you. They'd make it hard for you to score. They had a huge intensity. But I suppose it's a reflection of where Cork are at the moment with 123 scoring. It's a huge score. But there's a certain inevitability that Cork and Kerry are going to be in the Munster final in the 3rd of July. So, you know, it's, when, the, when the draw, when it's, a no, when it's not, like, when it's an open draw, the other guys have some right. chance, but as the seeding is at the moment, they have no chance whatsoever. Okay, all right then. Derry's Jared O'Kane claimed during the week that the Oakleaf County field they can win Ulster pretty much every year. The record shows, though, that they haven't done so.